lower respiratory system, we start off at the superior end, we have the hyoid bone, we go down into the thyroid cartilage. Then inferior to that, we have the coracoid cartilage. Beyond that, as we continue down our windpipe or our trachea, we have the tracheal cartilages, also known as the C-rings. We have our thyroid gland just shown on one side. It's a butterfly-shaped gland, so it does go to both sides. When we look at the lungs themselves on this model, we have the base of the lungs, which is the flattened side. We have the apex of the lungs, which is the pointed end. Now, when we look at the right lung, there are three lobes to it, superior, middle, and inferior lobe. If we look at the left lung, there is only a superior and inferior lobe. So because this has two lobes, it has just one division, the oblique fissure. Because the right lung has three lobes, it has two divisions, a horizontal fissure and an oblique fissure. One of the other distinguishing things you'll see on the left lung, because the heart sits angled slightly to the left, we have this cardiac notch on the left lung. On the inferior side, we have the diaphragm. Diaphragm is one of the most important breathing muscles that helps us draw air in and, and increase the size of the lungs. If we remove this, what you'll see here in the lung is the blood supply. So coming from the right ventricle up the pulmonary trunk, we've got the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary arterioles in blue. This is carrying deoxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood comes back on the pulmonary venules leading to the pulmonary veins, eventually going to the left atrium. What you'll also notice, other than the red and the blue, pulmonary veins and pulmonary arteries, are this light blue structure. These light blue structures is just a continuation of the bronchial tree that we started off from here. So there's air coming through here. So there's air and blood in the lungs. That's where we make our exchange. So by the time we get down to this level, we're looking at the secondary and tertiary bronchi. So this would be a secondary bronchus and then a tertiary bronchus as it branches from there. Coming into this lobe here, secondary bronchus and then tertiary bronchus from there. If we remove the right lung, you can see superior, middle, and inferior lobes. Again, that horizontal and the oblique fissure. But you'll notice the spongy material is what's representing the alveoli. The, the tiny, tiny microscopic level of where we actually see the gas exchange taking place. As we go all the way down here, follow the trachea down, we come to the carina. This is the bifurcation point where we split into the right primary bronchus and the left primary bronchus. Posterior to that, we have the esophagus. Esophagus is what sits just on the posterior side of the windpipe. Coming all the way down, you see the esophagus opens up down here. We also have the aorta, the aortic arch. You'll remember brachiocephalic, left common carotid, left subclavian. And then also, as that arch continues on, it arches downward. It's going to the thoracic aorta, and then all the way down to the descending abdominal aorta.